everybody. It's been quite a while since I've made a video. I was actually working on one about the Sandy Hook shooting when I heard about um, the Santa Monica shooting that happened yesterday. So there are a few curious things that come up with every shooting incident. One of which is that I was able to guess, and I'm not sure if it's accurate or not because all of the reports are so new. If you ha have not heard yet, there was a shooting yesterday in Santa Monica, California. It started with um, one or two men. They're not really sure yet. Oh, this one says acted alone, so that must be brand new that that actually just got released. So one man lights a house on fire. They think that it was the brother and the father in the house, I believe. And then he started opening shooting on a public bus and made his way to Santa Monica College. And before I read anything else, immediately I thought to myself, I bet anything he had a handgun, a shotgun, and an AR-15. And I'm actually going to read on in this and see if it says anywhere, because this seems to be the most recent. But so far, every article that I've read, a military-style rifle, every article that I've read confirms that, that he had a handgun, a shotgun, and a um, AR-15. This might change as things can present themselves and um, come to the surface with this story, but as of now, this man had those three types of guns. This is strange to me because um, that's the same criterion for pretty much every shooting that we've had recently um, in America. And this includes big ones like Columbine and the Aurora, Colorado Batman shooting, James Holmes, and the Sandy Hook shooting of um, with Adam Lanza. Now, all of these, he, they have those three primary weapons, a handgun, a shotgun, and an AR-15. And when you think about guns and gun control, these are the three primary guns that you think about. Now, something else interesting that happened with this is that it happened in what they call a gun-free zone, which is a joke because that's nowhere in America is going to be gun-free. If people want guns, they're going to have them. However, it was in a gun-free zone, so to me it just screams that it's invoking fear somehow. So then I started reading a little bit about this. President Obama apparently was a attending a Democratic fundraiser there three miles away from where the shooting actually happened. I got a little bit frustrated when I started reading some articles about that because a lot of them say his trip was not affected and this is a local police matter at this point and basically saying, oh, don't worry, the president's fine and happy even though this tragedy happened. So that's a weird thing, first of all. The second weird thing that I've seen with pretty much every tragedy that I've followed since I've been alive in America is that they have this eerie coincidence. If we look at, well, let's just start with 9-11. On 9-11, let's see which one is it. Aside from military exercises, a national reconnaissance, recon, reconnaissance, that's a really difficult word to read actually when it's written, um, drill was being conducted on September 11th, 2001. In a simulated event, a small aircraft would crash into one of the towers of the agency's headquarters after experiencing a mechanical failure. What's interesting about this is that I've read like, quite a few articles and listened to interviews, and a lot of the people that helped with 9-11, a lot of the military officials and um, emergency officials, they didn't even realize at first that this was not part of the drill. They all thought that this was actually part of the drill when 9-11 first started to happen. Okay, so that's 9-11. Look into it yourself. If you don't believe me, I mean, there's plenty of information out there. You can lift it from the actual military sites if you would like to. Moving on, let's look at the Boston bombing incident that just happened last year. In an eerie foreboding of the deadly Boston Marathon blast, the state's top emergency agency ran a training drill in March 2012 which was the month before, that specifically activated a plan for an attack that included bombs at the race finish line as well as one under the VIP grandstand. I just don't see how this could be a coincidence. 
They plan for bombs at the end of a finish line and under the VIP grandstand. All right, moving on. So we see that this is a coincidence. Yes, it happened a month before, but I think it's pretty much undeniable that that is a, a very unique thing to drill for and something that isn't going to be statistically accurate to say, oh, well, that happens all the time. No wonder it happened. You can't connect the two. No, I feel like these two can be connected because it's a very unique circumstance that they acted out. All right, so we'll keep going. Sandy Hook Elementary. This is one of the creepiest ones to me as well. Connecticut, um, the day of Sandy Hook Elementary School, was holding a course called Planning for Children in Disasters, or Planning for Children Needs in Disasters, something to that extent. This is basically outlining all of those things that they were going to go over. Um, explain what is required to keep children safe in emergencies and why those needs are unique. If you don't know about Sandy Hook, that was the elementary school shooting that just recently happened in the past year. Um, this was happening the same day. Again, a very, very odd coincidence if it is simply that. The statistics for something like that being a coincidence are just so small and minuscule that it's outrageous. So here's another one. Aurora Theater. This is the Batman shooting. Um, that day that they were having it, Real-life shooting imitates training exercise at Parker Medical School. This medical school in the same vicinity of Aurora on the same day was holding a drill with multiple medical officials from around the country and I think world I read in a different article. But this basically was a bunch of medical professionals training for this type of disaster. And then the same day it happens, and in fact it says in here, that they incorporated that into their training that day um, once they had learned that it happened. So again, look into that one yourself. So then today I typed in Santa Monica drill, Santa Monica shooter drill, Santa Monica mock drill. I was trying to find anything that I could. After some searching, I found this. Now, I'm not going to play the video because I don't want to break copyright laws, but I will say this. It's, it's kind of eerie to listen to them talk about the counterterrorism drill that they were going through. And basically, they did this, I think, well, oh, yesterday. No, they did this on Thursday, my mistake. They did this on Thursday in Los Angeles. The shooting happened yesterday, Friday, in Santa Monica. This scenario involves um, active shooters. And this was a huge mock drill that they did. It was it was huge. It had photographers everywhere. You can watch this video. You can see how many people were there. Uh, basically, it was outlining a lot of the things that happened with this shooting yesterday. So, just for those of us that don't live in California, Santa Monica is only 21 minutes from downtown Los Angeles. And that is not very far, considering that, you know... That's just not very far. So I guess my question is this. How can all of this be a coincidence? And I'm not saying that it's not. Maybe it is. It's what they call a black swan. It's a very rare coincidence that everything just happens to add up to be that exact coincidence. But my question is how does it keep happening with every single one of America's tragedies that we have coming up? Without even knowing anything about this shooting, I was easily able to guess, okay, these are the three types of weapons that he had. I didn't know, you know, what make or anything like that, but easily able to guess the type of weapon, and I was able to guess that there was some type of drill like this in the area around the day, within one or two days of the event. So how can someone like me, without any kind of military training, without any kind of law enforcement training, be able to look at this situation just upon hearing about it and guess those things? So if you have some answers, I would love to hear it, because I'm really interested with all of these shooter cases that are coming up. To me, it seems like it's something that's almost meant to scare our guns away from us, similar to Nazi Germany. Um, and I am by no means a gun-toting Republican. I just feel that that's kind of where they're pushing us, especially now that this one happened in a gun-free zone where it's supposed to be legally very difficult to get a hold of gun. It's just, um, I feel like, invoking fear. So yeah, I'm curious about your questions, comments, concerns. Let me know. Thanks, guys.